speak now to the lawyer, Jonathan Code, who represented Caroline Flagg. Jonathan Code, thanks for making the time to speak with us today. Uh, what You're do welcome. you make of this decision? Well, it's all very strange. It's, it, 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 it's strange in all sorts of ways because, as you've explained, uh, the initial decision of the CPS was not to prosecute. And I've looked this up. I mean, the CPS was set up to make independent decisions, independence of the police, set up about 40 years ago, just exactly so that the police who were investigating had something separate by way of advice to decide whether to prosecute or not. Now, unusually, um, the advice of the CPS, which was to caution Caroline, was appealed, apparently, uh, and the Met decided, on the basis of that appeal, to, to charge her. Mm. Quite what has brought about this belated review of the decision is something of a mystery. All that's said is that there's some new witness, witness evidence is available, so presumably we'll find out what that is in due course. And, Jonathan, just give us a sense of that appealing against the CPS decision by the police. How sort of regular is, is that sort of um, procedure? Well, I confess I'm not, I'm not a regular dealer with the CPS mm -hmm. uh, or the police because I'm, I represented Caroline in, in um, protecting her reputation and privacy. However, such as I do know suggests that this must be very unusual because the CPS has been particularly, specifically given the task to make these decisions. It mm -hmm. wasn't as if this was a massive issue. This was, a, on any analysis, a minor assault. And apparently the, the boyfriend in question didn't want to press charges. So quite why the Met Police decided to ignore the uh, CPS uh, decision, really, is, is something of a mystery. Well, not just ignore it as well, sort of appeal against it, argue against it, try and force it, them to change, to change their decision. Uh, and, of course, there was uh, lots of interest in this particular case, which, of, of course, I guess, with the pressure that Caroline felt, led to her making the decision that she did. Well, it, one of the things that concerns me is that... It, as the coroner said in the, in the verdict um, on her suicide, one of the things that drove her to it was, was press, was the press interest. My own experience, and also what Lord Leveson found, is that there has quite often been a, a relationship between the, the, the police and the press, which is not entirely as it should be. And one suspects that the reason why the police made this decision was to appease the press pressure, which I, I remember being there, that she should be charged to, to rebut suggestions, oh, well, she's had special treatment because she's a celebrity. So it may be that this, this decision, which is indeed unusual to appeal it, was driven uh, by a desire not to fall foul of the press and be criticised by the press, in which case that's an entirely wrong reason for the appeal to be made. Uh, and Jonathan, with um, Caroline's death, it was it was meant to be something of a, of a watershed moment, wasn't it? You know, the hashtag "Be Kind" took uh, renewed strength uh, following its sort of um, uh, birth on social media in, in 2017. But we seem to have have lost some of that judgment again. I'm thinking about the pylon with the the case around the Nicola Bully and, and you know the Princess of Wales recently. Uh, I mean, I don't know what my question really is, but what's happened to that sense of, like, of trying to make sure that people in the public eye who've, who face this kind of pressure don't get piled on by the press and social media? Well, you're absolutely right. There was that Be Kind movement. And if you've been doing uh, work in the media as long as I have, that wasn't necessarily the first time that call went out. And you'll remember when Princess Diana was, was driven to her early grave, there was supposed to be a change, a watershed, but there, there was perhaps briefly, but not for very long. Now, one of my clients is Philip Schofield. Now, Philip, who really... His wrongdoing was, was minor on, on any analysis, was absolutely hounded by the press. And as he said to himself, said himself in a BBC interview, that drove him to consider suicide. So the brutality of the press towards people, particularly celebrities, who've, had, who've done minor bad things, seems to be just as bad as it ever was. 
So what do you expect to happen next? Obviously, at the moment, Jonathan, we're still waiting to find out exactly what um, the Met Police are going to do in terms of this new witness evidence they have uh, available. What needs to happen, do you think, for, for Caroline's family and friends so that there is perhaps some sense of, of closure to this, to this chapter? Well, I can, my heart goes out to them. I mean, having lost Caroline, it's, it's difficult to see what it, to, to what extent these changes, if there are, you know, well, the submission, if, if, if perhaps that's what's coming, that it was a mistake to charge her. I mean, that, I suspect, will, have been, will be relatively modest help. But trying to imagine uh, how her mum felt, if it is acknowledged by the police, belatedly, that its decision to appeal the uh, advice given by the CPS was wrong, then I imagine that will be some comfort to her and she'll feel that Caroline has perhaps been vindicated even after her death. OK, Jonathan Coda, who acted as a lawyer to Caroline Fact, do appreciate your time this afternoon, Jonathan. Thanks for being with us. You're, you're welcome. Now, if you or anyone you know has been affected by the issues raised in this conversation with Jonathan about Caroline Flack, remember help is available. You can call the Samaritans on 116 123 or you can email joe at samaritans.org.